Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and this is CT5, chapter 12, and it's called Profit Testing. And there's quite a lot um, to get through in this chapter, and the exam questions actually count a lot of marks. But in order to understand this whole thing, you need to understand unit funds. And that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about in this video. Okay, so a unit fund, it's, it's a type of investment fund where instead of you saying, okay, I've invested 10,000 into this fund, um, how much has this 10,000 grown? What you do is you purchase these units. And these units are, they take the investment fund and they divide it into these units. So you'll say you'll buy 100 units at whatever price. And then the units, their price changes daily and you can sell out your units. So how does it work? Well, what I've done is I've drawn a little diagram. So first of all, you come to the investment company or the life insurance and you pay them a premium. Okay, of this premium, some of it gets allocated towards buying the, the units and some of it, like a small percentage, gets taken off. This is going to be added to the company's profits to cover their expenses and whatever. With your allocated um, amount, it then goes into something else that cuts it up some more and that's what we call the bid offer spread. So what you'll do is units might, when you want to buy a unit, it might be cost you 105% and when you come to sell it, it'll be 95%. And this difference between the bid and the offer is known as the spread and again, it's another source of profit for the company. So then once you've gone through that, you can use that to purchase um, units in the unit fund and this is separate to the non-unit fund which is managed by the company and on a regular basis there will be an, an additional charge um, sometimes it's called management charge and that's like every year one percent of the fund will be deducted um, towards towards paying your company expenses and, and so forth and then yeah, so what these funds pay out eventually is the unit fund will pay out um, a benefit to the policyholder, and the non-unit fund will uh, cover company expenses, um, like we've mentioned, and it might also pay out a benefit to the policyholder. And this dark blue benefit here is what we call, it would be like a guarantee. Um, so let's say the unit fund does really badly, um, the company might pay you back all your premiums or, or some sort of, of benefit. Um, what is interesting about this is this unit fund accumulates at interest and why they why this whole structure came out to be is they found that um, life insurance companies were initially offering a product that dealt with risk so you buy life insurance and if you die you get paid out an amount but they thought since we're collecting money from people why don't we offer them a savings element as well and so the risk element covers the risk and the savings element is money that people put in additionally and that accumulates. And that's where this whole unit fund came into be. So you'll normally see like endowment assurances. They're normally the, the product that incorporates this whole unit fund system. So yeah, let me just show you the diagram again. So you pay your premium, some of it gets siphoned off and then some of it gets siphoned off again, and then it goes into this fund, which starts earning interest, but then some more gets siphoned off. And in the, the test, maybe let's just jump there, because basically all these items and stuff I have talked about. So we can actually jump very, very quickly to, I want to show you how these exam questions are. Um, because your yeah, exam question comes ab about and here we go. Okay, that's quite small. So let me show you this one here. Okay, so this is when you have to do, you have to calculate the profit margin on a question like this. So the first thing you're going to do is you want to just create a quick summary of the question because it's going to be like a page long. They're going to bombard you with facts. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is construct, construct a multi decrement table because people can either die or they can surrender their policy, so they can say, I want to get out. Normally, they're then going to incur a penalty, and that would actually become a profit to the company. Uh, so, yeah, you want to construct your multi-decrement table using these formulas to change your independent probabilities into your dependent probabilities. 
And then what you want to do is you want to create two um, cash flows. And this is a bit like accounting. Um, hold on, let me just push this thing up here. Uh, the first one is the unit fund. So these will be your rows and then are these rows. Yeah, these will be your rows and then your columns will be the various years. It's normally three or four years. Value at the start plus your allocated premium, less the bid offer spread, um, add the interest, subtract the management charge, what's your value at the end? Then that comes back to the value of the start for the second year and you repeat the process. Then you get a little profit vector over there. Then you're also going to calculate the non-unit cash flow and um, yeah, so here you get the unallocated premium plus the bid offer spread, less your expenses, plus interest. This is a different type of interest. This is the non-unit interest. It will normally be a little bit lower, but it doesn't have to be. Plus management charges, and then here you can see there's death benefits, surrender benefits, and even maturity benefits. And then you sum those things up, and then the resulting of that will give you your net present value. Well, what you first want to do is just discount it um, by your force of interest and by the force of mortality, and this will be at another interest rate. So there's going to be lots of interest rates in this question. And then you're going to do the same with the premiums. And then the profit margin is simply dividing your expected profit by your expected premiums. And another type of question that they can ask with regarding this chapter is the profit margin with a non-unit account. And you can basically do the same thing, except there's one additional step in the beginning, and that is you want to calculate the reserves for the various years using that formula. Then you do your decrement table. Then you do your cash flow, which is quite similar. But you're not going to create a non-unit cash flow because it's all non-unit. Instead, you're going to have these additional ones. Hold on, let's need to move this up here. Um, and that is your subtract the increasing in reserves, um, add the interest in reserves. That's going to give you your profit vector. You're going to multiply it by the cumulative probability of survival, multiply that by the discount factor. That's going to give you the present value um, of profit. And then you're going to just, like we did it last time, divide it and you can get your profit margin. Or you can use this formula here to calculate the internal rate of return. And yeah, if the reserve basis change, um, you must redo this whole cash flow area here. And introducing reserves will normally decrease the net present value. So yeah, that, that is, I find this question quite challenging in the sense that it's very time consuming and if you don't know this process, if you don't learn this process, you're not going to know where to start and you're going to stuff it up. So go back, watch this video again, pause, look at the formulas I've written. They very. I try to make them as generic as possible, but please remember that you need to understand the question and you might have to make little tweaks here and there to the formulas I've got here. So do lots and lots of these as uh, practice. How I did it even was I looked at the, the answer with the question paper and I tried to figure out the process that way. I did that with a few before attempting some by myself. But yeah, that is, that is your yeah, profit testing chapter 12. It's quite a tricky one. So spend a little bit of time trying to figure this one out. But yeah, thanks guys for watching. Please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and write a comment um, if you have a comment in the comment section below. Awesome. Cheers.